What's up everyone, welcome to the Surfside PPC YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be going over everything you need to know about click-through rate and some ways to improve your click-through rate if you're struggling to get it higher. Now let's start here. If you're seeing a click-through rate like this, so this is my farmhouse goal search campaign. It's strictly a search campaign. We're looking at the all-time results. So I've driven over 10,000 clicks, over 6 million impressions, and you can see my click-through rate is very low, 0.17%. So if you're seeing a really low click-through rate like this and you're alarmed, one thing you wanna do is start by clicking on segment and going down to network with search partners. So this is gonna show you the difference in your results for your campaign for Google search and search partners. Now, I would never recommend getting rid of search partners unless it really drags down your performance in terms of conversions. So if it's making your cost per conversion increase, then you wanna get rid of search partners. In my case, you can see it's actually has a higher conversion rate and it helped my cost per conversion. So there's no reason for me to get rid of search partners. Now, if you're seeing a really low click-through rate, what you wanna do is compare your Google search to your search partners. If your Google search looks like this, 3.06%, then you're fine. That's a really strong click-through rate and it's not something to worry about. If your search partners looks like 0.05%, don't worry about it at all. You can see search partners has driven the majority of my impressions, but this doesn't drag down my campaign at all. There's really no way to optimize for search partners. So what you need to do is just focus on the Google search engine. So that's really where you wanna start. If you're seeing a low click-through rate, look, go to segment and view by Google search versus search partners. Now, the reason why click-through rate's important and the way that I go about finding areas where I need to improve click-through rate is by clicking on my campaign. We're gonna be looking at all of my keywords for the campaign. And then what you wanna do is go to columns, modify columns, and we're gonna scroll down here and you wanna go to quality score and then I click quality score, expected click-through rate, landing page experience, and ad relevance. And then you wanna click on apply. So now we're able to see all that data for each of the keywords that we're bidding on. If we scroll over, you can see here we have these four columns added now. And if we're looking at expected click-through rate and we just click on it, it's gonna show that for the most part in this campaign, my expected click-through rates are above average. So above average click-through rates, above average landing page experience, and above average ad relevance means you're probably gonna have a quality score of nine out of 10 or 10 out of 10. The reason you want a high quality score is because that's used in ad rank as part of every single Google ads auction. Every time someone types in a keyword, let's just use this keyword here, farmhouse valences, for example, what Google ads is gonna do is it's gonna look at what I'm bidding. So let's just say my bid is 50 cents and it's gonna look at my quality score and it's gonna compare that to all of my competitors to rank us. So if one of my competitors is bidding twice as much as me, but their quality score is four out of 10, there's a good chance that my ad still appears above theirs. So that's why you want a high quality score. It actually lowers your costs over time. And as we all know, we want to drive conversions at the lowest cost possible. So your quality score has a major impact on your, the overall performance of your campaign. So if you're looking to improve your click-through rate, where I would start is by looking at all of your keywords and then clicking on expected click-through rate. So we're looking at the worst click-through rate keywords in our entire campaign. And you can see here, some just don't have enough data, but the ones that do right here, I have about seven keywords, it looks like, that are average. So you can see my quality score is a little bit lower for a lot of these keywords. Some are eight out of 10, but if you're seeing quality scores of five out of 10, where everything isn't going so well here, average, average, and below average, these are the keywords you want to improve. Now, looking at all-time results, I've only driven two clicks from farmhouse blanket ladders, so it's not something I'm overly concerned about, but if you're seeing something, for example, we have farmhouse sign and we have farmhouse wood farmhouse signs over here, and you can see both of those, my expected click-through rate is average, and I've driven a decent amount of clicks from each of these different keywords, not really too many, again, to be alarmed by it, but those are the areas where you wanna start to improve your click-through rate. Now, when it comes to improving your click-through rate, my number one strategy is to organize your campaign and organize your ad groups. You don't want ad groups with tons of keywords in them. You wanna make sure your advertisements match your keywords and that your advertisements are sending people to relevant landing pages. If you have one or two landing pages for an entire campaign, what you wanna do is make sure you're creating more landing pages for all the different keywords that people are typing in to trigger your ads. So what I'm gonna do is we're gonna come back over here and I'm just gonna look at my search keywords and we're gonna look at the way they're matched up with, with each individual ad group. So you can see here, keyword farmhouse Christmas tree skirts and the ad group matches. Ray Dunn bowl sets, ad group matches. Let's look at our top keywords by impressions. You can see here the Ray Dunn keyword 
it's an, in its own ad group with exact match keywords. Farmhouse curtains, farmhouse curtains, Ray Dunn mugs, Ray Dunn mugs. So you want to make sure your ad groups and keywords really, really match up. And you want to make sure that your ads for each of these keywords are going to be relevant because you want your the search terms that people are typing in to trigger advertisements that are relevant. And you want your landing pages to solve the problems your customers are searching for. So if we click on farmhouse curtains here, we'll look at this example. You can see I'm only bidding on five keywords total here. And if we scroll over, you can see my quality scores for each keyword are pretty strong outside of primitive curtains. So what you wanna do is make sure that everything is matching. So if we look at our ads here, I have four total advertisements and everything matches really well, which is why my expected click-through rates are strong for all these different keywords. So coming back over to our campaign and looking at our ad groups again, and let's just come in here to the Ray Dunn exact match ad group. You can see I'm bidding on different keywords in different categories of Ray Dunn products, but this one that's exact match, three keywords, if we go to my ads and extensions, you can see my ads are really just geared towards Ray Dunn decor, and on the other hand, for the ones that are Ray Dunn mugs, the ads say Ray Dunn mugs and it sends them to a landing page that's just Ray Dunn mugs for sale. So you wanna make sure that everything is matching up. That's number one, organize your campaign, create ad groups by theme, make sure that landing pages where you're sending traffic are gonna be really geared towards the keywords and the search terms that people are typing in when they see your advertisements. That's number one. Going to number two, Using phrase match keywords and negative keywords is a really good strategy and it's a great way to start a campaign because you can always add some of the different keyword match types. Now with negative keywords, you wanna make sure you're excluding any irrelevant words or phrases from your campaign. So let's just come over here and we'll come back over to a different ad group. So let's scroll down here and we'll look at farmhouse TV stands. So you can see I have some different keywords here. I'm targeting all phrase match keywords. Now, if you wanna add new keywords, if you want things to be more broad, what you can do is use broad match modifier keywords. So farmhouse TV stands, put a plus sign in front of each word for the keyword. And then you're going to make sure that anything that people are searching, it's going to match close variants. It's going to match synonyms. So this will help you expand your campaign a little bit. If you're looking for more volume, the other two options, phrase match and exact match. Now, the one thing you don't want to do is farmhouse TV stands. This is a broad match keyword and it's gonna match all sorts of different keywords, all sorts of different search terms. It's gonna make everything a little bit too broad. It's gonna hurt your click-through rate and it's really gonna hurt your overall campaign performance in my experience. I only recommend broad match keywords for advertisers that pretty much have an unlimited budget. So we'll get rid of this keyword here and we'll click on cancel. The other thing you wanna do is make sure you're looking at your search terms report. So this is all time August 27, 2018 to September 4th, 2020. If we look at our search terms here, what you want to do is look at the search terms that are driving a lot of impressions. And if you see anything here that's not relevant, you want to get rid of it right away. The other thing you can do is come in here and see if there's any ideas for ways that you can take a keyword and build it into its own ad group. So if we scroll down here, one thing I might be able to do is do farmhouse TV stand 70, DIY farmhouse TV stand. I might be able to take some of these different keywords and put them in their own ad group if I think I can create ads and landing pages that are gonna match up with the intent that people are searching for. Now, the way I set up my campaign, I don't have to add too many negative keywords, but what I can do is exclude any brand names that I see, anything where people are looking for something that's just not relevant or something where maybe I already know I don't have that product on my website. So if I look here, you can see Ashley's 65 inch farmhouse TV stands. So that refers to Ashley furniture. So if I didn't have any Ashley furniture products on my website, I might just want to get rid of anybody who's searching Ashley in general. So if I don't have Ashley Furniture products for sale, then when someone clicks through to my website, they're probably not gonna find what they're looking for. So that's a search that I can exclude for my campaign. Now, the way to improve your click-through rate with this search terms report is to find things that are driving low click-through rates, any with a lot of impressions, not a lot of clicks, and usually those keywords will stand out because they'll be a little bit more broad. If I was just bidding on the keyword TV stand, that would probably drag down my click-through rate because people who are looking for TV stands are looking for all sorts of styles, colors, sizes, everything in between. So we come back over here, in my experience, using phrase match keywords, especially as you set up a campaign, makes it so your click-through rate ends up staying pretty strong in general, as long as your campaign and ad groups are organized. So number three is gonna to be to use all ad types and relevant ad extensions. 
So what you want to do is we're going to come back over again to our ad groups and we're just going to look at farmhouse curtains here. So we're going to come over to ads and extensions. You can see I'm using responsive search ads and expanded text ads and all four of the advertisements I've created are driving a lot of impressions so far. And you can see the click through rates pretty similar for most of them. This one looks like the clear winner in terms of just click through rate. But the way I usually set up my ads, if I'm able to, is I'll create a responsive search ad that sends people to one landing page. I'll duplicate this advertisement and send people to a different landing page. So these are actually the same advertisement with different final URLs. And then I'll do the same thing with expanded text ads. I'll create one ad, one expanded text ad. I'll duplicate it and send people to a different landing page. That allows me to test advertisements and landing pages at the same time. So over time, as I get more and more data, what's going to end up happening is the ads that actually perform the best are going to serve the most. So if we come over here to cost per conversion, you can see these expanded text ads are performing the worst in terms of cost per conversion and in terms of conversion rate. And my responsive search ads are performing better. So they're getting more impressions. So that's why you want to create multiple advertisements. You also want to make sure they're really geared towards the keywords that you're targeting. So I don't have anything about primitive curtains in my advertisements. So that's the reason why if we come over here to search keywords, primitive curtains, we come over, my ad relevancy is below average. So this could be a case where I could just pause this keyword or I can make sure I create an ad that has primitive curtains actually mentioned in it and make sure that my landing pages mention primitive curtains as well. Now, the other thing you wanna do is come over here to ads and extensions, and you wanna use ad group level extensions. So when someone's typing in farmhouse curtains, they're gonna see my site link extensions for valences, drapes, they can go directly to the shop curtains page, or they just go directly to my shop if they decide they wanna look at everything. Call out extensions, I have hundreds of farm curtains, top rated curtains, different variations that people can purchase, and then the price that they start at. So just all different things that people might be looking for as they search these keywords, and then some different styles of curtains that I have on my website. So using ad group level extensions, rather than just telling people to go shop now or linking to farmhouse furniture or something that's completely irrelevant to the search, using ad group level extensions and making sure that you're using all relevant extensions for your business just helps you create more targeted ads. And that's really the goal is to make sure your ads are as targeted as possible, especially when you have a campaign like this one with so many different categories of products. So number three, use all ad types use all ad extensions that are relevant for your business. If you're trying to drive calls and use call extensions, if you have a physical location, use location extensions. You need to make sure your ads are optimized. So they're targeted to each individual search query. That's going to trigger your ads. So that's going to be number three. So quick little recap, organize the ad groups in your campaign, use phrase match keywords and make sure your keywords are grouped by theme in each individual ad group, and then use all the different ad types and ad extensions and use them at the ad group level, specifically the ad extension so that you're making sure people are getting the best possible user experience. That's going to help you increase your quality score and really decrease your costs over time. Number four is going to be to test ad copy, test different offers and review your competitor ads. So do some searches for the keywords that you're bidding on. Just look at what your competitors have as their ad copy and maybe look at the, the ads that seem like they are always at the very top of the search results. So I would highly recommend always looking at your competitors advertisements. And then over time, what you want to do is just go into your own ads, see what's not performing well. So what I could do right here is pause both of these expanded text ads. Or I could say, okay, this one has a better click through rate. So maybe what I want to do is pause this advertisement and we're going to try something different. So there's different ways to optimize your advertisements, but really in this case, what I would do is probably pause both of my expanded text ads. And then I would just create a new variation and see if that helps at all in terms of click through rate and see if that helps at all in terms of cost per conversion. Now, when you're looking at click through rate, one thing you want to do again is segment by network with search partners, because what you might find is something's performing much better on Google search than you realize. However, it looks like this advertisement right here is my top performing ad in terms of cost per conversion, in terms of pretty much everything. So I could create a new ad variation for this one. I'm going to keep this as is for right now. I don't think it's a big enough difference for me to really focus on changing this. But you can see here, Google search for this expanded text ad, 3.27%. Google search for this other advertisement, 3.54%. 
What I would probably do in this case is create a new responsive search ad, use the landing page right here. So this landing page seems to be performing a little bit better in terms of cost per conversion, but overall when you factor in conversion rate, they're pretty much performing exactly the same. But I could create another responsive search ad and maybe duplicate it and do the same thing with the landing pages. So just some different ways to look at it, but really what you wanna do is make sure you're looking at the click-through rate for each individual advertisement, and as you get more and more data, pausing the ads that aren't performing as well and creating new ones, because over time, the ads are always gonna be improved by Google Ads. Now, last but not least is find low-performing click-through rate keywords. So again, we're just gonna come over and look at all the search keywords for our, our entire campaign. So we're gonna to come to our campaign, click on search keywords, and again, make sure you're looking at these different quality score columns and just click on expected click-through rate and find the click-through rate keywords that are performing the worst. So anything that's below average or average here, making the changes you need to to improve that click-through rate. If I was gonna go ahead and try to improve the click-through rate, let's just say for farmhouse sign, what I would do first is just go into the individual ad group here. You can see I'm bidding on two exact match keywords come into my ads and extensions, and it seems like things should be performing well, but maybe this responsive search ad not performing well at all compared to this one, so we're gonna pause it. So just looking at something like that, you can see this click-through rate is 0.94%, 2.05% on Google search, this one 1.76%, 3.31 on Google search, so we'll pause this ad altogether. Now we have another expanded text ad down here, not performing well, we'll pause this one too. This responsive search ad performing the absolute worst, we're gonna pause this one as well. So now what we have is just this one advertisement which is performing better than the others. So what I can do is create a new ad. So what we're gonna do is click on the plus sign here and I would create a new responsive search ad in this ad group. You can see it already pulls in some of the different headlines I already had. So what I would wanna do is just change the ad copy around a little bit, maybe test a different offer, something that's gonna entice people to click. Cancel, yes, leave. I'm not gonna go through with that right this second. I would also make sure my extensions are all added at the ad group level, maybe create a couple new extensions and then what you can also do is go into keywords, look at your search terms. Now in this case, I'm only bidding on exact match keywords, so it's really not gonna be too much to see, but you might be able to find something in here where things just aren't performing that well. That's really where I'd start. So A-B testing ads, making sure I'm creating new advertisements, making sure my extensions are as relevant as possible. And then you really just wanna understand user intent. Someone who's looking for a farmhouse sign is looking to improve their wall decorations, so I have to make sure that my Landing page has all sorts of different wall decorations, specifically farmhouse signs. So when I think of farmhouse sign, I pretty much think of those wood signs that say farmhouse on them. So I assume that's what people are looking for. So it looks like my landing page experience overall is strong above average. It's really just this one keyword, farmhouse sign, improving this click-through rate. So again, I'd probably try the extensions. I'd keep A-B testing ads, and that's where this testing ad copy your offers and reviewing your competitor ads seeing what some of my competitors are doing could probably help me rewrite new advertisements for this low performing click-through rate keyword in my account so these are the five main ways to improve your click-through rate this is really where i'd start organize your campaign and ad groups target phrase match keywords in your ad groups use exact match keywords for example i did it with ray dunn so when someone's typing in ray dunn i want to target that exact match keyword but i'll use phrase match for things like ray dunn mugs so that you don't have any overlap between different ad groups so people are seeing the ads that are the most relevant for the search and ultimately ending up on the best landing pages so they convert using all the different ad types, in this case, responsive search ads, expanded text ads, and making sure you're using every relevant ad extension at the ad group level. And then over time, what you wanna do is keep improving your low performing click-through rate keywords. Make sure you're constantly checking that search terms report so you can find negative keyword ideas, and then A-B testing your ads over and over and over again. So it's a best practice for really high volume accounts to create new advertisements either weekly or every other week, and then making sure you're always incorporating any current promotions, offers, discounts. If you have a limited time free trial, limited time discount, make sure you have it in your advertisements and you can even use extensions to do that. So there's a lot of different ways to improve your click-through rate. If you're really having trouble, start with those search keywords that have 
average or below average expected click-through rate, reorganize your campaign if you have to, make sure your ads and your extensions really match, and again, if you have to create new landing pages, that's probably the last step I take, but your landing pages can also help your overall campaign performance. So that's pretty much how I would go about improving my click-through rate. You can see my click-through rates for this campaign are pretty strong with most keywords being above average. So that's really your goal to make sure your quality score is as high as possible. Thanks for watching my video today and make sure you subscribe to the Surfside PPC YouTube channel.